Hi there, we're going to take a look at another update for Project for the Web. Assignments is now available. That is time-phased assignment data on a resource level for tasks. Very excited about this, so let's see what that does in the application itself. Now before we dive into what we can do with Project for the Web, let's have a brief recap of what you can do with Microsoft Project. In Microsoft Project, we know what a assignment is, right? It is the combination of a task and a resource. And work, or effort, as it's called in Project for the Web, will be on that assignment level. So in Microsoft Project, I created this project called Assignments Comparison. And I have a list of people working on this project, as well as different percentages of different percentages of allocation. So Eric and Dave work 100%, Wendy works 80%, which means roughly four uh, days a week. And then we have Lou, who is working as an advisor in this project. So he just works one day a week for this project. So let's head on over to our Gantt chart. And here you'll see one long task. It takes us 20 weeks and that's roughly 100 days and it started uh, at the beginning of March this year. Um, and I just included every resource that I could find. So let's select that long task and let's open up the view pane and then the details. In the details pane, you'll be presented with the tasks form by default. But we can also change that, for instance, to the resource usage. And if I look at that, I will get a list of every resource and the task that they're working on. And this gives us our assignment or time phased assignments throughout the project. Now, this is the resource usage view. And we also have a task usage view. And here you'll see work that's being done by Eric 100%, by Dave 100%, Lou just works eight hours a week for this project. Now the beauty of this view is that we can change the allocations. So I can say that in, um, in the weeks of May, Lou will work less on the project. That changes his overall allocation and it shows you that there is an assignment that has been edited. Now, why doesn't that task move? That is because I have this task as a fixed duration task, as you can see. Tasks are fixed in the duration. So if I change the amount of work, the effort that Lou is doing on the project in May is decreased. So this is how project does it. Let's have a look at how Project for the Web does it. Here we are in Project for the Web. I have assignments test, a small project uh, created by uh, using the simple project template. And I started assigning myself as well as Gerwin, as well as Peter Kestenholtz and the other Eric from Projectum. Um, and these tasks now have assignments. Now for a single user on a task, effort is very easy, right? We'll see effort and all the effort that I'm doing will be allocated to me as a person. Now, if I increase the amount of people working on this project task, what I'll see is that the effort is increased as well. Two weeks of work, 200 hours of effort. Great, that would be equally divided by the different resources. Now, we have a couple of tabs open here. We have the board view, the timeline view, charts and people, and we already know these, right? But now there's these ellipses. And if I open that up, I see the assignments as an option. That is new. So let's click on it and see what we get. All right, so this is the new assignments table because it's not really a view, it's more of a table, right? So I'm calling this a table. So the assignments table is currently ranked as a resource first. So we can compare this to the resource usage page in Microsoft Project. 
one big difference uh, between project and the uh, project for the web is that there's a limited set of values here. We see that there are seven columns and nothing more. So this real estate is not being used. If we compare this to what we have in the timeline, for instance, the timeline has this nice little bar here or the scroll bar here so that you can move between the different dates. Um, now one thing I noticed when I was working here is that they changed the look and feel of the summary. So the summary now looks uh, a little bit nicer, I think. I at least think it's nice. So what we're seeing here is the timeline has that scroll bar. Um, charts doesn't need it. Board doesn't need it if you don't have a lot of values in the board. Uh, yeah, we know that we can group by sprint nowadays. Um, the grid doesn't need it as long as you don't have added columns, but the assignments table is currently limited to seven values. Now these can be either daily or weekly values, but still it will only show you the seven values that you have in here. Going to a next or a previous uh, time frame, will increase the value, will move to the next seven or previous seven values on this grid, on this table that we have here. So for instance, we have the 16th of April. Uh, if we move to the next set, we'll see the 23rd of April being the first value here. Now, if we move to a go to date, be aware that if I select the 19th of March, that will be the second column in the list. So you'll always be presented with the previous week or day and the current and next five values that we have here. Now, one thing I really like about this page is that we can also group this on the task level. So here we see a task that Peter and I are doing together. Um, so let's find that task in the time, uh, time frame. And I can change the allocations for myself as well as for Peter. Um, now let's have Peter's engagement and see what that does to our grid. So this will be 20, this will be 20, and this will be eight. As you see, the effort is decreased on the task, but the duration that we're doing this task hasn't been changed. It is not possible to change that directly in this cell. Going back to the grid, you'll see that the work that uh, Peter and I are doing is decreased in the amount of hours. Eight, uh, 180 hours in total. And if I go to my assignments, that corresponds nicely to the 120 hours that I'm doing and the 60 hours that Peter is doing. So with this update, we can now be more accurate with assigning our resources. Well, one thing I do want to test out, one thing I do want to test out is what will happen if I increase the amount of work and extend the finish date of the project task. So let's do that right now. I'll increase to 20. I'll increase to 20 once more. And I increase once more to extend that date. Now you'll see that the assignment for Eric didn't change, but for Peter, it did. Peter's engagement or assignment for the project task is increased. Looking at the grid, we'll see that that date or duration is increased as well with 5.6 weeks. That means that the work that Peter is doing is allocated on a day by day basis or a week by week basis. So let's find that project task and that assignment again. So here we are on the 11th of six. 
So the 11th of 6. And if we look at a daily value, go to the next time. So here we'll see that it moves. So here we'll see that his work is only being done on a weekday, Monday till Friday, and four hours a day. So that's it for Project for the Web and the assignments table that's currently available. I'm very excited that this has uh, finally landed in Project for the Web. Let me know what you think, what is it missing, what would you like to see next in Project for the Web. I'll keep you posted on any features that land in the application. You might also want to subscribe to the channel, like this video if you did, and uh, I'll see you next time.